Thank you very much, Accra community, for tuning in once again to the Accra Back to School Enterprise, where we bring you live updates on what exactly is happening all around the school community and all its facets. And as always, the Achimotan story is definitely wrapped up in the lives of certain remarkable individuals who have taken a great stand and have made very, very significant contributions, not just in our country, but in other countries all over the world. So today, we are at the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, and we are here to speak to none other than the former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ernest Ayute, to delve into his life as an Achimotan student into all his contributions thereafter. Thank you for staying with us, and let's head up into his office. Hello, Accra community. Thank you very much for joining us on yet another episode on the Accra Back to School channel, where we speak to very remarkable people, women and men of the motherland, who have made amazing contributions to both Ghana and the world at large. Today, we are here with an amazing, extremely amazing individual who has taken the name of Achimota School far and wide, not just here in this country, but overseas in various countries. We are talking to none other than the former Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ernest IET. Thank you so much for, for welcoming us into your office today. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, nice chat that I am looking forward to. Yes, please. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, Prof, um, we, we were thinking, we were looking at how Achimota School has been of impact to us as younger Akres and how it's been of impact to um, the older generation of Akres. And we're thinking, who do we speak to? And so we spoke to Akra Fafa and she mentioned that, oh, one of the best people to speak to will be Professor Ines Ait. And we definitely agreed that Prof is definitely one person to speak to. So that's why we are here today. And we essentially, to begin with, want to find out about your childhood. I mean, who was the then NSIT before he became Professor NSIT as we know today, right from childhood, what was the story like? Oh, well, I've had a, a very interesting life story. <laughs> um, I, like many children of my age, mm -hmm. uh, born into a very normal family, uh, a father who was a civil servant, mm -hmm. a mother who was a private midwife. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I, I started my um, early years at Nkoko. I don't know if you know Nkoko. It's yeah. in the Eastern region. Uh, that's where my mother had her clinic. Oh, okay. So that's where I grew up. Wow. Uh, that's where I spent my first eight years yeah. before moving to Accra. Oh, but Prof, considering that your dad was a civil servant and your mom had her own private clinic, mm. now, Prof, you're not bad at all <laughs> in the, no. at the time. <laughs> no, I, was, I mean, I was... <laughs> That's why I said I was a very normal, normal I grew okay. up in a very normal, <laughs> we were not rich, we were not poor, we were just uh, an average Ghanaian family. Okay, yeah. okay. I think mm. some people would argue that you were not, you were not so average, you were quite good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, it, it, I mean, it, it all depends on who you compare yes. yourself to, too. yes. Okay. I mean, uh, growing up at Nkoko, uh, Nkoko was fairly different from what it is today. Hmm. Uh, it was um, be, be largely a transport node, okay. you know, so many people going from Accra to the Kwau towns okay. uh, will go by train to Nkoko and then catch public trans other public transport to go up the mountains. Okay. Uh, people going to Kumasi will stop at Nkoko for some refreshment or something. Okay. That's what it was known for. Uh, today, it's a much bigger uh, town very much active very 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 much it's still a transport node hmm. uh, but uh, a very vibrant place much more vibrant than it used, used to be in my time yes interesting. Mm. so by the time uh, my parents moved us to school in Accra hmm. I was eight years old and then I, I went to a preparatory school at Collegon in Accra I don't know, I don't know if you okay. know Collegon exactly I do <laughs> so so that's where uh, my Accra years began. began. Wow. Yeah, so I, I spent uh, uh, another uh, five years at Radio Tree before coming to Achimoto School. Wow. So, so if you ask me, hmm. where did I spend my childhood? Uh, Nkoko and Koligon. Nkoko and Koligon. Oh, yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, it about eight years at Nkoko mm -hmm. and then five at Koligon oh, yes, before yeah. heading to Achimota School. Yes. So please, at what level did you come into Achimota School? And then again, what even prompted your, your decision 
to even choose a school like Achimota School when there was maybe Infantipim or there was a Desadol College, mm -hmm. Gastons. Why did you choose Achimota School? Well, it was very, very interesting. You know, um, I had not really paid much attention to what school I would be going to. I had not paid much attention to it. Many of my uh, friends mm -hmm. at school, who at, at the time were, were 12 years old, yeah. many of my friends at school were considering schools like uh, Infantipum, Adesado, uh, the Catholics among us were concentrated on the uh, St. Augustine's College mm -hmm. and so on. Um, those who didn't have any strong interest in going to a boarding school were thinking of Accra Academy. Mm -hmm. And um, I had not really paid much attention to, I mean, I, I, my older brothers had uh, all gone to GSTS in Takrady. Oh, okay. And so uh, I guess they took it for granted that I would also be going to GSTS, <laughs> yes, yes. you know. But I, I had not really made up my mind. Um, a part of what brought at the, the school to my attention was the fact that my mother, hmm. my mother and her sister, uh, went to Achimota School. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, they were the children of a Methodist minister wow. at Abredungwa, the central region. Wow. And from there, I guess with the help of the church, they had managed to come to Achimota School. So that's how Achimota School came on the radar for me. Oh. The fact that my mother had been there, and there. made wow. it uh, <laughs> uh, something of interest uh, to, to consider. Hmm. And so I thought about it. And the more I thought about it, uh, the more I got interested. Wow. And then uh, at some point in time, my father uh, was uh, gave a ride to somebody who was going to Achimota School hmm. uh, to visit her son. And so we went to Achimota School. And I saw the school and I loved it. Hmm. You know, I loved it. And then I had also a few uh, friends, older friends from Kualigon who ha were in Achimota School or had been to Achimota School and spoke about it. Oh. And so the more uh, people spoke about the school, the more I got interested. Wow. And that's how, in the end, when my teacher asked me what school I wanted, I didn't hesitate. And, yeah, mm -hmm. My father would have preferred, obviously, that I would go to uh, Accra Academy oh. because in his mind, uh, if I went to a day school, it would be cheaper for him. Hmm. And uh, even if I wanted to go to a boarding school, then probably being uh, uh, an Anglican, hmm. I should have gone to Adisado College. Adisado College. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't going to have any of that. Once I settled in Achimota <laughs> school, school, that was it. Interesting mm -hmm. to know that your mother actually went to Achimota School. But please, within what year to what year was, was your mom in Achimota School? Uh, I, I found that my, my, my mom was one of the uh, very first people, not in a, uh, but she left Achimota School in 1934. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, she she was went there, there very early. Yeah, very early. And wow. She left the school in 1934. 34. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Prof. Mm -hmm. So, Prof, what was Achimota, now we've gotten into Achimota School. What was Achimota School like? What was the experience? I mean, getting into Achimota School, maybe as a form one boy, and the journey throughout Achimota School. Mm -hmm. what, what really happened? Because one, one reason I ask this question is, you keep coming back to Achimota School year after year. And in fact, you've, uh, you've contributed immensely to Achimota School and you still do. So it means that I, I get the impression that there must have been something, some experience that you got within those five years or so that have stayed on your mind and have, has kept you coming back. I must say that uh, my five-year experience at Achimota could it have been any different hmm. from uh, my peers? Okay. Um, we did the same things. Hmm. We enjoyed the same sports. We enjoyed doing the uh, groundwork hmm. or gardening. Uh, we enjoyed our times in the Agri Chapel, in the classrooms, in the dining hall, hmm. the assembly hall for entertainment. Uh, th there was always a variety of things to do. Mm. You know, one thing I knew about Achimota School, or I remember, uh, there was never a moment of boredom. Mm. Uh, I don't remember in all my time there, there being any 
period in which I didn't know what to do. What to do. Wow. You know? <laughs> so, so if you didn't know what to do, the school always knew what you, know what you should be do. doing. <laughs> you know, so you woke up in the morning, uh, and then uh, you got ready, did your house chores, and then went to uh, Agri Chapel for the morning service. Uh, then went to Danny Hall, went to classroom. Mm -hmm. After that, you went back to the house. There was siesta. Mm -hmm. And after siesta, you either did games or you did groundwork. You know, I guess with the exception of Fridays, uh, every day there was something. Wow. You know, uh, that, uh, in terms of sports, you were doing the were things that you did in the first term, or the things that you did in the second term, mm -hmm. and then in the third term. Uh, there was always something. There was always something. Um, you had to be exceptionally uh, um, uninvolved, okay. uh, not to find yourself doing something. Doing something. Like that. Yeah. Hmm. And even when we didn't have any sports or groundwork, there were other extracurricular activities that you could engage in. Hmm. So it was an Achimata school that I learned to play chess. Oh, nice. Yeah. I learned to play chess hmm. uh, at Achimota School and I've enjoyed it all these years. Yes. Uh, uh, there, there was always something to do. Okay. There was always something to do. Wow. It, you know, one of the things I always find uh, interesting telling people that while it was fairly common hmm. in those days to find people uh, running to town for one thing or the other on a Saturday morning <laughs> to go and watch a movie at Opera Square so, um I never, wow. I never found it necessary. Yes. It wasn't because I was a, a, a well-behaved person, hmm. but you could have to do what? Do what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had nothing to go at. I mean, once uh, I got home for the holidays, hmm. there'll be many opportunities to go into town and do whatever I wanted to do. Hmm. You know? So why run out, out of, of school, school to go and do something? There was no incentive. Hmm. There was no reason. There was no justification for me. Hmm. You know, so I, I, I enjoyed my time at Achimota School. Every moment wow. there was filled with something. Amazing. I got to know people. Uh, one of the things that I liked about the school very much was the friends that I made. Mm. Uh, to date, many of the people that I call my best friends uh, are people that I met at that school. school. Wow. You know, they are, they, are, they are people I can rely on. Mm. They are people that I've known for many years and I trust them, mm. or many of them. Uh, and so, it sort of, uh, uh, the experience, the shaped my life. Uh, the, the values that I cherish the most, I acquired from being there, wow. uh, from the teachers that I had, hmm. from the friends that I made, from the parents of other people that I met. Wow. You know, yeah. Interesting, Prof. So, Prof, what house were you in when I went to school? Very interesting question. <laughs> you know, when we came to Form 1, the school began the experiment of having Form 1 and 2 boys in a junior house. Oh, okay. The idea was to protect the new Form 1 boys and girls okay. from being bullied, bullied by the seniors. By the seniors. Mm. And so they put us in junior houses. Mm. Uh, so I was in Livingston House. Oh, okay. So there were two boys' houses for juniors, mm. Livingston and McCarthy House. Mm. And so I was in Livingston House. And then there was a girl's house, one girl's at Kingsley House. Okay, Virginia. So I was in Form 1, in Form 1 and Form 2, I was in Livingston House. Wow. And then when we were going to Form 3, mm. the school changed its mind <laughs> about uh, Form 1 and uh, about the junior, junior house houses. system. <laughs> and so they brought us, no, no, sorry, I made a mistake. When I was going to Form 3, hmm. and so I went to Agri House for, for, for as a senior, as in the senior house, I went to Agri House for Form 3 and Form 4. Oh, okay. So in Form 3 and Form 4, I was in Agri House. Hmm. And then when we were going to Form 5, then the school changed its mind. <laughs> so after four years of this experiment with junior <laughs> houses, the, the school decided to revert. Hmm. to the old system where from one to upper six year old in the same house. house. Wow. So uh, what they did then was to find people 
who were in the senior houses mm. who could be transferred to junior, junior houses. houses. By that time, House 12 had also come up okay. as a, a junior house mm. for boys. Oh, okay. uh, I guess as House 11 had become a junior house for girls. Mm. So uh, in each house, in each of the senior houses, we had to cast lots hmm. <laughs> to see who would leave, <laughs> who was leaving and going to one of the, uh, either going to Livingston House or going to McCarthy House or going to House 12. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately for me, <laughs> I was one of the few boys. In, I was in, really enjoying my time in Agri House. Agri -house. Today, <laughs> if you ask me which house I was in, I would say Agri House. Agri -house. Agri -house. Agri -house. I spent only two years there. <laughs> Two years, yes, as I did in the Levinson Levin House, but many of the friends that have remained uh, with me hmm. uh, were people that I met in Agri House. Agri House. <laughs> so after a very painful uh, uh, experience of uh, <laughs> selected House Twelve, oh. I, I was made to move to House Twelve. House Twelve. You know, oh. that, 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 talking about House Twelve, something very funny happened. <laughs> Even though so I, I come to four or five, and I, I was in house twelve, mm. I refused to accept that I was in house Past twelve. 12. <laughs> so every day after classes, uh, instead of going straight to house twelve, I will follow my friends so to Agri House, <laughs> and I will sit there and sit there. Of course, as uh, night time came hmm. and people were prepared to go to bed, you, you had to, to find a way to. You know, so, I did that for a week and I realized I was being silly. So, you have to go. so finally, I, I moved fully to, to House, house 12. 12. Okay. Yeah. So, please, what's House 12 in present day at Mota? I think they, they, I think what that's what they call Stopford. Stopford. Oh, I okay. think so, yeah. So, mm -hmm. on the Western compound. Yeah, so the Western compound. Wow, yes. That's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. That's nice. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Did you have any um, prefectorial positions in Achimota School? No. Were you an outgoing person, a leader in, in that regard? In I, would, I wouldn't say, no, I mean, prefects were six formers. I wasn't in the oh, six form. So, it, yes, for six form, I had to leave. I left at Chimata School. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't what you could, you know, I was a regular uh, form five boy. boy. You know, I, I didn't have any position in the school. Okay. Um, the, the only thing that uh, one will call a, a leadership role was uh, I, I, um, was a part of the students' movement for African unity. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, became its president in 405. Wow. So uh, that's probably the only leadership, leadership. role that uh, I played. Yeah. I, I wasn't, I was a registered regular student. Wow, that's that's very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, Prof, um, I gather that I, your, your major, let's say going into the university, was in economics, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Yeah. So, please, were you a science student or you were an art student in Achimota? So, in, in, I, I was what you call a science student. You know, Achimota School, um, in those days, had a very thin line between science and yeah, uh, arts. Oh, okay. So, we all did everything uh, up to Form 3. Mm. And in Form 3, you chose whether you wanted to do science or arts. Oh, arts. The main difference between doing science and arts in those days was that you did additional general science okay. and additional general maths. Oh, okay. You see, so these are things that I did. And I did that in addition to my uh, other arts, yes, okay. English, French, and uh, history and all those things, yes. Wow. So many of the people that were doing arts also did to do the, they had to do the general science and mm. general maths. Mm. Yeah. So it was in the first form that you could really identify who a science student was. was. And, yeah, even though the, the, those who did additional general maths and additional general science were considered to be science students mm -hmm. for the O-levels, yes. Interesting. Yeah. So I did, I did additional general science, I did additional general maths, but in the sixth form, I, I dropped uh, all of that and I did literature, hmm. economics, and, and, and uh, uh, history. Wow. For my sixth form. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. But I gather that your sixth form was not in actual My sixth form was at Presec. It was at Presec. Yes, okay. my sixth form was at Presec. Interesting. So yeah. I, I believe you probably identify also as an Odadie or not. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's mm. amazing. But more mm. of an Achimota and Accra than an Odadie. You can, you can feel that, yes. yes. Wow. That's, that's yes. really great. That's really I mean, one of the things I always say is that um, since uh, 
um, my, my my entire adult life, mm. uh, I have received more uh, invitations from Archibaldown School to be associated <laughs> than I have from uh, from Presec. Yes, <laughs> so uh, I tend to associate more, but I'm still very active. Uh, in my Presec year group, year group. Wow. Yes, uh, my six four mates are uh, very much uh, a part of my life. Wow. Yes, uh, so yes. It's very, mm. very, very good. So, Prof, leaving Achimota, did you go straight to the university? Did you take a gap year? What, what happened to you as you, you left Achimota School? Oh, so I left Achimota School. I, mean. I, I went, left Achimota School, spent two years at Presec and went straight to Legon. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, the interesting thing about going to Legon was, um, you know, um, at the time, many of my friends, or many, many in those days, if uh, you were in a sixth form doing arts, uh, everybody expected you to do administration <laughs> or do law. Uh, interestingly, I had no strong desire hmm. to do either. You know, uh, I had no strong desire to do either. Uh, so at Legon, I did economics. Mm. In my first year, I did economics, political science, and statistics. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the second year, I dropped political science mm. and did economics and statistics and finished with that. Uh, uh, so did statistics as a minor. Wow. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's how my uh, career uh, began. <laughs> began, you know, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So four years at Legon for, for the three, first... Three years. Three years, actually. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so does it mean that in those times, the yes. program ran for three yes. years? Yes, in, in, in those times, the, the, the undergraduate program was a three-year program. Three-year program. Uh, the four years thing is quite recent. It, it started oh. with the uh, GSS... Uh, and SHS uh, system. Yes, yes, precisely. Wow, yeah. wow. That's Until then, we did three years three at Legon years. For, for a first degree. Oh. Great. So please, I, I, I gather that you also did a master's program. Yes. Was that at Ligon? No, at KNUST. KNUST, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so, so after my uh, first degree in economics, mm. I was looking for uh, something that helped me to apply mm. my economics. You know, so I, I was looking for something that was more, very much an application. Mm. Uh, and so I figured that planning, planning. you know, um, would be the appropriate thing to do. Mm. Uh, so I, I did a, a two-year master's program in, in regional planning. Regional so planning. yeah, it was wow. focused on regional development. How do you pursue regional development? How do you plan for regional development? Mm. That's, that's what I did uh, and um, I enjoyed it. So I spent two years in Kumasi doing uh, the, the master's. Yeah. It was very much, very, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, that's quite a, an interesting program to do. Regional plan, I, I feel it, it's, it's a program where you really need to apply yourself and apply uh, yeah, def def strategy and yeah, thinking. Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so many of the things that I engage with today as an economist hmm. are things that were sort of uh, provided to me uh, through the engagement with development planning. Hmm. So things like poverty and inequality. Hmm. Uh, trying to solve the uh, poverty that you find in our towns and villages and mm -hmm. so on. These were things that came. I became uh, um, aware of uh, as I, I, I you know, did my planning uh, masters. Wow. Uh, we had to spend time uh, in the north. We had to spend time in in Tamale. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to spend time in uh, Sunyani and other places. So. These experiences gave me a fairly decent understanding mm. of what life was like, mm. uh, what uh, poverty meant, mm. wow. and how one could use policy mm. to deal with uh, uh, poverty and inequality, mm. not just the spatial inequality, but also inequality of societies. Mm inequality of different communities, inequality of people within the household, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, so, so how one household could have different types of people in it mm -hmm. uh, as a result of the uh, distribution within the household, the household. itself. Wow. Uh, 
of course you saw the uh, uh, access to uh, various things by men mm -hmm. and how different it was to for uh, within the same household for women you know so these are things that uh, informed your uh, views mm -hmm. about development wow. these were things that informed your understanding mm -hmm. of uh, intra household uh, relations and so on wow. yeah because these are things that I, I I learned first from planning before uh, uh, focusing more on them in my economics uh, much later. Much later. Interesting. Prof, you, you have a, a very long track record of a lot of learning done, a lot of materials published, a lot of books published and all. How hard, um, how hard have you had to work, right from when you got into Ligon as an undergrad student, all the way to when you became a professor and say vice chancellor of the University of Ghana later on? How hard have you had to work to climb this ladder because not everybody gets such an experience not everybody gets to climb through all these ranks of academia and learning and leadership to the top so before we even get to those conversations how how much efforts did you need to put in to do all these things <laughs> i hope you don't expect me to say that i was lazy no i wasn't lazy <laughs> and uh, um you no know, it's it's um it's been a lot of hard work hmm. there's been a lot of hard work um what i think has been very important uh, in my development has been my capacity to stay focused. Mm. So um, the things that I decided to do, I focused on All them. Those things. I didn't allow myself to be sidetracked into mm. non-essentials. Mm. Uh, I wasn't, I was never a bookworm. Mm. I was never the type of person who knew only his books okay. and stayed uh, only One with those. Books. No, I was never. I mean, I've always had a, a very uh, um, interesting life mm. where the things I engaged in were, of quite, were quite diverse. Wow. You know, I, I knew how to play and I knew how to study. Mm. Um, so I worked hard, yes. I worked hard to get a first degree. I worked hard to get a master's, then I worked hard for my doctorate. Mm -hmm. One thing I always tell people is that uh, uh, doing a doctorate, uh, if you want to really do a, a good doctorate, get a good doctorate, you have to work very hard. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires you to be able to defend everything that you say or write. To, de to be able to defend it properly, defend it theoretically, defend it through the different concepts that have data and analyze the data properly and be able to you know. So you can't do that if uh, you're not focused. You can't do that if you're not working hard. So, so um, hard work, yes, certainly pays. Uh, I don't think I could have come this far if I didn't work hard. Yeah, and so I encourage young people always look and I always say to them that hard work never kills anybody. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So please, um, truly, hard work never kills anybody. And young people who are watching this would be very much inspired to work hard because they know that one day they get to be like Professor Ernest Ayute or do other diverse things, which still makes them very um, responsible people in the future. So, Prof, at this point, you've done your master's, you've gone on to do your doctorate. Please, what was your doctorate in? what they call political economy political economy mm -hmm. interesting and then afterwards with a doctorate program please was this at legon or was it a different no, no, no. i went i went i was in germany for my phd oh okay yes um please how many years was that i was there for four years, for four I, years. I, I left Ghana in 81 hmm. and i came back in 86. oh okay but how wasn't it quite difficult to live in a country where the language spoken wasn't english it was something else it was german no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I wrote my thesis in English. Okay. Uh, but um, I, I, I took seminars in German. So I, I went to language school. Oh, okay. Yes, I went to language school. Uh, but, I, but I didn't have to write my thesis in German. In German. Yeah, but I spoke German for conversation. Oh. Uh, nice. I could listen to a lecture in German and understand what is being said. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Oh, then Prof, I'll, I'll take some German lessons and probably come back to you so that we could speak on some German. But 
so this was in Germany for four years, mm -hmm. then you returned back to Ghana, I presume? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. I returned to Ghana and went straight to the University of Ghana. Of Ghana. Yes. Uh, I was hired at ESA. Okay. Uh, that's the Institute for Statistical, Social and Economic Research mm -hmm. in 1986 mm -hmm. as a research fellow. Wow. As a research fellow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Please, and uh, what you, you did at that time were a lot of Ghanaians doing things, were a lot of Ghanaians pushing the barrier when it came to learning, when it came to even leaving the country to go and pursue their learning at that point in the country's time, time frame? Oh, well, yeah. It, it was not uh, uh, uncommon. Okay. Yeah, it was not uncommon for people to go out uh, to go and study uh, for a, a higher degree. Wow. Uh, many people were doing it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What was problematic was that many of those didn't come back after finishing. Oh, okay. Yes, people who went about the same time as I did uh, and never came back. Came back. Wow. Or came back much, much later. Much later. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. The prospects over there appealed more to them sure. than the country. Mm -hmm. So. Prof, um, to conclude on a few things, there are a lot of notable achievements and if we truly want to talk about them, we'll probably spend the next two hours here instead of the 30 minutes we spoke to you about. But what I would want to probably highlight on maybe briefly, with in addition to a few others briefly, would be your role as Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Ghana's premier university. How did that happen and how did you get into such a space? How did it happen? <laughs> <laughs> I was appointed. Uh, the position was vacant. Okay. It was advertised. Hmm. I saw it and I applied for it. Wow. And um, they gave the job to me. To you, interesting. Yes. I, I'm yes. sure that, that must have come on the backdrop of your competence in being able to handle that position. I hope so. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> uh, I, I, I believe that uh, I, I got the job because the university authorities were um, convinced about my uh, track record. Wow. So it was that track record that gave them the confidence that uh, I could uh, do it. Do yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I, I even as a, as a teacher, mm -hmm. I see the challenges in handling a classroom. I see the challenges in handling students on a regular basis mm -hmm. at a, wherever I find myself. So to see someone handle an entire university as its head. I, I find it to be no mean feat, so I definitely have a deep respect for such people. I, I, will, <laughs> I will not pretend to you that it was, it was easy. It was, it was not at all easy. Uh, it was not at all easy. It was something that uh, uh, came with its own challenges. Mm. But uh, the good thing for me mm. was the fact that uh, I had been at the institution for many years, okay. first as a student and then as a faculty member. Mm. So I knew many of its challenges mm. and so could think about how best to tackle those okay. challenges. Wow. Um, I knew um, what challenges the students faced mm. and I accepted that uh, it was the responsibility of the management to tackle those challenges. challenges. Okay. Uh, I, I had come to appreciate the enormity uh, of the challenges facing the teaching staff, mm. um, the lack of resources for doing their work, mm. um, the need for them to do more research than they were doing and uh, how best to facilitate that mm -hmm. or something that was always at the back of my mind. Amazing. So uh, as a vice chancellor, uh, I pursued a program that had taken many years to sort of plot out. Uh, it wasn't easy to sell the program to people mm. because it involved changing many things mm -hmm. at the university. Wow. And that was never going to be easy. At all. But uh, I'm happy that uh, we did change quite a few things. Mm. Uh, today I look at the results and I'm quite happy with them. Wow. Amazing. 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 Aqua Community, we are wrapping up on our conversation with Professor Ernest Aiti because truly 
it, we honestly cannot take some hours or minutes to tell the story of somebody who has delved deep into academia and into so many contributions all over the world. So we we'll be wrapping up over here. We'll just ask Prof our last question, concluding question. I think we'll be done with this episode on our crab back to school. So Prof, my very final question since this is Achimota centered is how was your experience as OA president and how did you lead the OAA to secure a lot of things, to push a lot of barriers to conclude, maybe just in a minute or two? <laughs> you know, uh, again, I had not anticipated becoming OA president. It wasn't, uh, and then I was invited by a group of people to stand for OA president. So wow. I did. Uh, I did, and uh, I must say I enjoyed my time as OA president mm. considerably. Um, it was, for me, a moment to give back mm. to the school. Mm. Um, the school uh, clearly, as it still does, had too many different challenges. Mm. Um, and so working with people trying to convince other across about the need for us to support the school mm. became an enjoyable task. Wow. Uh, encouraging people to pay their dues, mm. uh, encouraging people to get more involved in school activity, and getting people involved in OA social activities and so on, became things that initially were quite a chore, uh, but by the time I was leaving office, I'd come to enjoy, enjoy and appreciate. It. Yes, uh, so I'll, I can look back on my six years as mm. the OA president uh, with a lot of satisfaction. Amazing. Uh, I saw the changes that we were able to initiate. Mm. I saw their results and I still see their results today. And so I have no regrets at all oh, about becoming oh, yeah. OA president. <laughs> and I, 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 I do hope that uh, in the future years, mm. the OA will grow from strength to strength. strength. Amazing. Thank you so much, Prof. We've been talking to Professor Ernest Ayite, who was our former OEA president, former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, and a lot of things, former a lot of things, that if we decide to mention, we may actually not leave his office today. So thank you so much for watching this episode of the Accra Back to School. Thank you for listening and getting inspired by what fellow Accras who may have gone up ahead of us are doing, so that as a younger Accra, or as an upcoming Accra, or whatever level you are, you can aspire to be greater and to do deeper things in the coming years. Thank you so much. Until we come your way next time, thank you for joining us.